Hello everyone. Welcome to Straight Talk Vermont Show. I'm Bruce Wilson, Executive Director, and my guest today is Tabitha Poo Moore, NAACP Director. And uh, today we're just going to um, talk about uh, racial justice and, and just learn what um, um, Tabitha is doing with NAACP and how you can be a part of it. First, I just want to say a couple things um, for about our Art So Wonderful um, Art Gallery opening up on August 21st at the University Mall. And it's going to be an incredible event. We're going to have uh, free, you know, different finger foods and, and drinks. And uh, a lot of people will be there. We're going to have a big event before the opening um, where the commissioner, the pe deputy commissioner will be there from the Department of Health. We talk about COVID and we'll have uh, um, Tabitha Poole Moore there to talk about racial justice and everything she'd like to say. And we'll have Keisha Moore there to talk about um, voters' rights. we have uh, Max Palmer uh, doing a uh, comedy show and DJ Ryan Unstoppable who's going to throw a little, some hits out there for us. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to start at um, 4 p.m. Oh, also, we're going to have our unveiling of our 100-foot mural that's in the um, food court at the um, University Mall. So stay tuned for that. So, Tabitha. Hey, it's good to see you. Yes, thank you so much for coming on the show today. And and I must say, uh, Tabitha has been my friend for, oh God, I don't know, for over 10 years. And then we always, she was uh, helping me with uh, some youth um, advocacy work. Um, she used to be a, well, like a teacher at Mill Rivers High School and, and been involved in, with the community. We was a part of a lot of different things in, uh, in Rutland County. And so um, I'm just so happy that I'm still, you know, able to work with Tabitha and learn, learn from her. So t tell us, what's going on with the NAACP? Well, the NAACP is still alive and kicking. I think um, it's fairly new to Vermont. The first branch was founded in 2015 here um, in the Burlington area by Mary Brown Guillory. Uh, that was the Champlain area branch that's no longer still um, up and running. So we're trying to find somebody uh, who would love to restart that branch because the more folks we have involved with the NAACP, the more powerful yeah. Uh, we can be in, in, in lifting the, the work of racial justice, but I'm the president of the Rutland Area Branch, which uh, Mary actually got me started in in 2016, and we were uh, chartered in 2017, and then in 2019, I think, 2018 or 2019, the Wyndham County Branch was founded by Stefan Gillum. So we currently have two active branches in Vermont, and uh, we work very closely together. Both are in the southern half of the state. Um, <clears throat> we focus on a number of issues. Political. Oh, Where's Wyndham County? I keep Wyndham talking. County is Brattleboro. Brattleboro, okay. Yeah, it's like right. the whole southern oh, awesome. skinny part of Vermont. Oh, okay. It's huge. It's yeah, yeah. a huge region. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just go out there. Yeah, so Stefan is, is holding it down down there, doing some really great work. And um, both branches focus on um, five or six core issues, including political engagement, political activity. You'll see us doing uh, legislative items pretty regularly every year. Um, legal issues. We help people who are experiencing um, um, just racism in the workplace or in other areas and we try to um, give them support and services that they need or make sure that they're connected with the Attorney General, the Human Rights Commission. Uh, we do a lot of educational work uh, with our schools. As you know, there's a lot of problems in Vermont schools with racism and we were um, and continue to be active in what is now Act 1, which is the Ethnic and Social Equity in Schools Act. Um, so we do a lot around education stuff. We also do a lot of educational programming in the area because by and large Vermonters, especially white Vermonters, which make up 96% of Vermont, wow. don't really have a lot of information. Well, we grew. Right. Well, so people like who like me is like, it's like what are we, like 2% now? You know, we're, we're about that. I think there's 7,890 black people ages, you know, birth to near death um, in the state, you know, and I grew up here and it didn't feel like that much. And so it was nice to come back. But... Um, so, you know, we do a lot of, of outreach and education stuff for folks in the area about how do you deal with racism when you see it, how do you spot it, uh, what do you do um, in your community, ways that you can encourage and attract diversity, those kinds of things, and um, health, you know, right now with COVID-19, we're sure. this far apart. Yeah, sure. Um, so trying to make yeah. sure that uh, black and brown people, people in marginalized positions are taken care of, we do a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, so I know that... Um 
Uh, you spoke for Juneteenth event. We was on actually we did on June fourteenth in front of yeah. City Hall in Burlington. Yes. And uh, there was a lot of people out there, you know. And your speech was, t you know, right, you know, I was like, I'm standing up here with you because <laughs> I know you're going. It's good to have you there. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I felt I, I just wanted to feel it, you know what I mean. And so, um, so, <clears throat> what do you think about Juneteenth? Actually, what do you think about you know the meaning of, of that is for um, yourself, you know, because. Right. You know, and, okay, you know, cool. what it, and uh, maybe some of the history you think about. Because I don't think a lot of people, even black folks, know about Juneteenth. June, June, right. Juneteenth, right. yes. Well, I, I knew about Juneteenth as being June 19th because it was yeah. my parents' uh, wedding anniversary. Yeah. But growing up, I didn't know what it meant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I grew up here in Vermont. So it wasn't until I left Vermont that I got um, a basic black education sure. um, at my tiny little women's college. Yeah. Um, and I was like, gosh, there's so much missing. So I really appreciate that we have a day where we celebrate, um, you know, um, the ratification of the 13th Amendment. But um, it's we still have a long way to go, as we talked about wow. uh, during that event. Um, Vermont especially has a really long way to go. I would love to see it recognized as a federal holiday. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and yeah. because it's it's so significant to yeah. the building of this nation. Sure, no doubt about it. Uh -huh. you know, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that was that was very important. And um, and then our, our good friend Keisha Ram was um, the coordinator of, of that event. Yes. And, um, and so um, you know, I was happy she did that. And you know, that you came to speak, and um, you know, people came to listen. Yeah. You know, and um, I've, I've seen it. Um, actually, um, CCT seventeen was out there, and I, you know, so I've seen, I saw the show. Have you seen it? On that the show? No, yeah. I haven't. No, I haven't. You've been telling me about it forever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Probably so, since um, we So um, you can just look it up on CCTV Channel 17 because they, they, they filmed the whole thing. And um, and then all the other networks out there, but you know, they can't get the whole thing. But um, yeah. CCTV 17 does. And it's probably, was on, it's probably on PEC TV too. Oh, okay. And uh, so I know also, you know, you were part of the Racial Justice um, Chalk Project. Um, uh, yes, that was so much that fun. Was some, one day, I forget what day it was. Um, I think it was like two weeks ago, maybe. Yeah, yeah it was. It was, yeah, it was a small. really wonderful yeah. opportunity. A nice day too. And um, the good thing about that was, uh, people will come out and they they'll, they'll put um, we had a chalk, you know, lettering justice or something was on the ground, and people were coloring in, the kids mm -hmm. and parents and you know seniors. I want, that was a wonderful day. It was really, I, you know, and I think when people think about racial justice, they think that they have to be out there marching with signs and, you know, um, have this big political platform. But people don't realize that racial justice is a human issue and we need to connect with people wherever they are and however they come to the table. And that chalk event, I thought, was a really wonderful way for anybody could come and you didn't have to talk about anything. You could just, you know, pour your heart and soul into... Um, making a beautiful community project yeah. to say, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's what I care about. You yeah. Know, here's, here's some words that I like to say, you know, and uh, I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah, so that, I, I, I enjoy that event too. So now, Rutland County, you know, because, you know, I, of course, you know, I spend a lot of time in Rutland County, and, um, and I like Rutland County. I like it's so beautiful out there, and, you know, and I like the greenery, and, you know, it's, it's really nice. But, but it's, you know, how many white people live there? I mean, how many black people live there, should I say? I mean, what's the numbers? Me, of my brother. <laughs> no, um, we have a pretty low percentage. I mean, uh, Chittenden County pretty much took all the brown and black people. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, by the way. Right. Um, but they're really, I don't know what our percentage is, but I know it is low compared to the state. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's really quite difficult um, for people of color, especially black folks, to connect. Yeah. Um, and it is such a large area and with so few people, finding ways and opportunities for us to come together is really yeah. tough. Usually we'll do monthly uh, soul food suppers. Oh, what, uh, what soul you food, call it? A soul food Sunday. Oh, man. And people just get together, right, and, and bring whatever they want. And like wow. um, Green Mountain College, when it was open, oh, you know, yeah. they would come and wow. Castleton would bring students. And it was sure. just an opportunity for people to get together and see each no, other. That's awesome. Yeah. I hope you're going to really get that kick in again because I, I guess the schools are going to be open or whatever. I don't know. I don't what know. is it doing here? Here. What are the schools doing? Um, I, I don't know. Mm. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know what's what's going. On. I don't know if it's going to be virtual or it's going to be, um, um, you know, going back up. I see a lot of students coming back to town. You know, so I knew, I just left Church Street, and it was some. It was a lot of college students out there. You know. Really? And yeah. They oh, were wow. like getting shopping on. And I mean, I thought, you know, like getting their little gear or whatever. You know. Yes. And so um, I really don't know. I got to find out though, um, because. I, I gotta find out because right. you know, like I live in New York, I'm a commissioner, so I need to right. know. <laughs> you probably know, right? Yeah, I should probably know. But um, 
So, but we'll see. And um, but I love that um, you know, Castleton has moved downtown there in uh, Rutland. They do have a couple of buildings downtown. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what they're doing with them though. Well, it, so know? one, uh, two of them was dorm, uh, dorms. Oh, one, okay. you know, not the dorms. Um, State Street, uh, mm -hmm. not State, yeah, um, West Street. West Street. And, and then they have one on um, Center Street, that yeah. art, art, art gallery. Right. And it's so nice in there. And, um, and so um, so they're right downtown there. And, um, and they're, um, you know, I, we, for years I worked for Council Center on, in the art department, for the art department of students in church. I didn't know that. Oh, right. oh yeah. So, um, yeah. So um, I'm hopeful that I can still, you know, continue to do that work with them. Um, so, um, I'm also a Rutland um, Ch Chamber of Commerce member, and so I'm trying to figure out, um, you know, because I'm going to be doing some more work down in um, Rutland right. County. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, how what should we, how can we, we what we should do, and um, and um, and also you know um, Rotarian. So I um, you know I've been to a lot of um, Rutland Rotarian meetings, yep. and so how can we get the Rotarians? You should. Oh, well, I can get you in there. We can speak. You know, I'll be with you about uh, NWCP and um, the Rotarians, Kiwanis, and um, and as well as the Chamber of Commerce. And that's that's very important um, that they should help out here here um, learn some things mm -hmm. and um, find out ways they can help. Because you know, um, just like. Um, um, you know, like so. You know, Black Lives Matter is like really popular today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's been popular for us all our lives, but but now everybody likes have it hard. Feel that um, they should do more or accept black. I don't know what word. I mean, you, you should work out the words. They, what should they do for us? What what? Right. How can we? What should we do to work with people who are not of color? What should we do right. more of? Well, I, I think. I mean, well, what should they do? Right. Well, one of the things that we try to do is offer educational opportunities because a majority of our membership is white. We'll often ask, what is it that you need? And they'll say things like, I have to go to Thanksgiving and deal with my racist uncle. What do I do? So we'll offer workshops for people and like, how do you have difficult dialogues and um, take care of yourself, but at the same time, try to ma remain um, <clears throat> in healthy, you know, relationship with that person. Um, so a lot of a lot of what folks need first is education because they don't know what they right. don't know. And then after you know they kind of get that basic grounding, it's a lot of self-reflective work and understanding the ways that white supremacy and, and systemic racism has impacted and imprinted on ourselves yeah. and then on everything that we do. A lot of what, what I hear um, from folks, and this isn't specific to the Rotary or, right. or the sure. Kiwanis or anything, but um, what I hear from a lot of white folks when you ask them, like, like, what do we do? And it's like, well, step outside your boundaries and do this. And they're like, well, we've never never done it that way before. Right. And we're like, exactly. That's right. why you've never been able to engage yeah. people in minority positions. Yeah. So really encouraging people to do, do things differently um, than they have mm -hmm. um, is a lot of uh, yeah. what I recommend. Yeah, yeah. so we just was talking about this before the show, you know, started that, um, um, like, you know, like Black Lives Matter and racial justice and fair and partial police and all, all, those, all those issues. Is that like when a white person drive across any street in America now? They don't drive across like a, somebody painted Black Lives Matter, and so consciously, I think it should be supposed mm -hmm. to mean like it's like a stop sign almost, like you know that. What should we do? I mean, uh, that Black Lives Matter, and um, and so yes, that's right, Black Lives Matter. And so um, how can what is my how do I feel about that? You know, as a, as if I'm a white right. person, how do I feel about right. that? And what should I do to help? Yeah. Um, what is important, you know, for me to teach my kids or, or yeah. be around my um, family <clears throat> or constituents or peers? What 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 other things should, should we do? You know, should we write, you know, like guess who's coming to dinner, like Sydney Portier or whatever? You know, should we the write original, them, yeah. should, should original, right? Should we invite them to dinner? Invite a black person to dinner? Oh. And so, <laughs> so like the, when, on your speech where people can view your, um, mm -hmm. um, your YouTube video about you speaking at an event, you know, um, one, and one thing I said to you that you had said that, that you know, made me like, that's right. And I'm like, yeah. You know, <laughs> that just listen to what we say. Yeah. And it, it's so much easier if a, a, a non person of color, if they really want to do something to help a person of color or want to change their thinking or just want to be um, more, um, you know, involved, you know, just 
just do what a person of color say because they live, we lived it, you know, our ancestors lived it, you know, we, we, we've been stereotyped. I mean, I, I don't know how many words I can use, you know, but um, <laughs> all the things, all the things, but so we know we have some ideas. You know what I mean? We have some great ideas. We've had, we've had to study white culture since we were dropped here. We've had to understand the whims and needs of white people and the way that they think and the way that they learn and the way that they process and the way that to undo yeah. things. So we are very well versed in whiteness. We're also very well versed in our own needs. So, you know, I, I don't know anyone better positioned to um, lead the conversation about, you know, the direction and the outcomes. Um, than people of color. Right. And, and it's so much easier. Because, like, you know, you know, like, you know me, and all my, since you know me, I've had youth advisory boards. Yeah. You know, I don't go around and tell youth that they should do this, that, and other. It's I so say, good. what do you need to, what, what do you need? How can I help you? you know, if, you if you're a great carpenter, I'm not going to help you be a, 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 a carpenter or a journeyman. If you say you want to be a doctor, my job is to help you be a doctor. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's, how easy is that for me? That That's how we've been so, so successful and with youth or, and you too you know um, since we've been doing the work with you it just pretty much asks them what's your goals dreams and aspirations how can we help you and they say it boom and so and that's how and that's how it is and, not, and we help them with the and same deal it's mm -hmm. how easy is that for me how easy is that that's easy right. you know just tell me you know let me tell you how you can help work with a person who look like me right. you know and it, it should be easy for that but it should be like thank god you know what i mean well and i think you know i think so many folks get uptight about it because you know it's been over 400 years and we're still having the same conversation and you know white folks in general will be you know get very scared because they might hear some things about themselves that they don't want to know oh, yeah. or that you know like oh my gosh i didn't know that i perpetuated this and i i just encourage everyone to just like hold that because you're always going to find out things about yourself that maybe you weren't prepared to learn yeah. uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't learn from it and you know change yeah. if you need to yeah well i know for a fact that white folks or non people color you know should i say uh, have um been wearing blinders for since i've been before i was born you know oh, about um what what the re what's real you know just for an example you know and I love everybody, obviously, you know, if I didn't like white folks, I wouldn't be came to the right state of America. In <laughs> yeah, the, you're in the wrong in place. 1989, <laughs> I'm in the wrong damn place. You know, come from Chicago. Yeah. You know? So anyway, so I'm just like Obama, President Obama, right? But, you know, he came in. He, I thought he, I think he was out of his mind to do any um, uh, coming to anyways, because he had come in three wars, you know, pretty much. And it was a recession and oppression, <laughs> whereas that um, uh, we, we, we were they gone broke, you know what I mean? Uh, America was um, on the bench of bankrupt, you know, the whole mm -hmm. country. And then he had to deal with that. And then, you know how funny, was, you know, so, so, so a lot of people now in the club will say, Obama started the three wars. He started, he came in on it. Now, he started those wars and that he made the economy worse. And, and what he did was the smartest recovery you know, economics um, stimulation that I thought can ever be done. He's like, okay, so what we're gonna do, you know, we're gonna use our own two dollars you know american guy whatever and spend it on ourselves we're going to build our roads we're going to build our schools we're going to build our you know we're going to spend the money on ourselves so now we're going to have the bridges and the roads and, and so we've got to put people back to work and then that's going to stimulate our economy now how smart was that and so they're like oh my god he spent he did this he did that he he right. he, bro he put us in he broke the country you know what i mean and he did one of the smartest stimulus packages ever you know what i mean and so People have blinders on for what really is good, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, and so they still do, you know, and they still do. And so they just got to take the, I think they're doing it now, take those blinders off and actually see that, you know, what black people were in slavery for 400, 500 years. We really were, you know what I mean? And we and we really did build this country and we really did do build it for, out for at uh, no cost. You know, we were slaves, and then became indentured servants. Yeah, we, for, we paid for it. We paid. For, we paid for, and worked for absolutely yeah. zero dollars. And um, and then you know, then false, falsely, people say, well, you keep working for us when, when um, Juneteenth came around or whatever, and or before that, and said, you know, we'll um, we'll give them, um, forty acres in the mural. You know what I'm saying? I want my forty acres in the mural. That'd be you know, nice. I want it. 
You know, it, it, I'll forget. I'll forget a lot of stuff. I know? would take two and a cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my forty right, and, and my mule. You know? How about, how about <laughs> you just stop a, stop oppressing me? That would yeah. be great. No, I don't no, know. No, you know, I, you acres, know. That's, I'm just saying. It's, it's funny. It's kind of funny, but it ain't. <laughs> but it's, it's in theory. You know, what I'm saying. I'm so. What I'm trying to say is, many people of not of color through years had just have, is, have lied. Have um put us in hardship, yeah. we built the country, you know, they challenged us economically, we put us in the poorest places, took over, taken all our um, all our, our riches, like I'm talking about, like our gold and oil and different things that we, that from Africa. Our music and our, our culture. music and our culture. <laughs> and so, and they ain't these blinders on, like, you know, they created this. So so now we just want you to take those blinders off and understand, and number, number one, understand that everybody, and no black person created this or said this or discovered this, that Number one person came from Africa, so no white person was born in Africa. They are all black. So everybody from everybody who was born in, the, in this world, in this first man, came from Africa. And that I didn't, I didn't. That was my footprint that uh, mm -hmm. that created that, invented that, or said that. That's true facts. So let's let's understand that we all are came from the same peeps. Ooh. And so it's interesting you should say that. My friend was just telling me I had no idea that one of the Queen Elizabeths and there's a couple of other queens of England who were half black. But the history is buried because to right. recognize blackness is to recognize an excellence right. um, that mm, but, but, for some reason Caucasians did not want to be. Right. Um, you know, they, didn't, they didn't want to be seen as um, like, you know, um, you know, anything a part of. Part yeah, of part of. and it's so fascinating because, I mean, when you look at algebra and math and libraries and irrigation systems and farming and all of those things they came from Africa yeah. because that's where humanity right. originated right you know mm -hmm. and so no you know so we're not gonna keep talking about all this stuff but there's these things that they got to take these blinders off and realize that's all I'm trying to say yeah and also um, you know, it's ain't no no white person ever built the pyramids <laughs> not one you oh, could, you first, get the, this is where you get the people talking about the Jewish people were enslaved you know right in the pyramids uh, and um, I I, I'm always very curious about you know what that meant in terms of racial makeup, because um, I don't I don't think that are Jewish people considered white. No, not at all. And so so the, so the history is all twisted, and on um, the blindness that stays on, they just don't want to be you know people just don't want to be like okay we ain't a part of the black people not at all not even a tiny bit. And so, but they are. See, I think what's happening that they realizing it. You know what I mean? And that um. The history just says itself. We didn't. We didn't write. We didn't write that stuff. We didn't. We didn't write the Bible where it says that God looked what he looked like. That his that his hair was woolly and his um um his skin was uh, bronze like it was burnt in the fire. That's how he looked. You know what I mean? So I, who said I way before our ancestors? Right. Who well, that's that? the re yeah. That's revisioning of history right. through the eyes of uh, whiteness. Right. Um, based on ideals that. Yeah. Um, white should be supreme and that's where white supremacy began it began so long ago right. that people today are so disconnected from white folks I should say are so disconnected that they don't understand um, how incredibly ingrained um, those beliefs are in oh everything all the ways that our societies wow. have been set up um, and so that's why I think that education is so critical yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's so that's another thing too. Is, you know, when I when I come up here when I was a kid to um, Vermont, I told my mother I was coming to Vermont to live. I got to tell you the story. But I said, Mom, I'm coming to Vermont. I tell you story all the time because it's funny to me. I said, Mom, I'm moving to Vermont, and she said, That's great. You're going to make a difference. And so I didn't know what she meant because I was you know was part of civil rights in there. You know, Jesse's just just coming out. Jackie, Harold Merrill White just coming to our house when I was you know, young. And so I was always part of it all growing up. But um, so I didn't know what she actually meant. But it's, but I you know I knew that you know she meant something around that I was gonna make a difference being black in the whitest state of America. So what so so what so so one year I called my mother up. I said, Mom, Mom, I made a difference. I made up difference. She said, What you do? What you do? I said, Vermont is the second whitest state now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> nothing else, I made a difference. Yeah, right. So now you say it's 2%, yeah. right? Yeah, it was, we're I think it was like 0.1% when I came in. Uh, yeah, but, it's still pretty, it's still, yeah, so it's, I feel like it might be. It was the second one straight now, I think, right? Yeah, we were number one, now we're number two. It's us and I think right. like Wyoming and Maine, yeah, the well, three yeah. states kind of go yeah. back and forth. I yeah. don't think we've ever been lower than two, than yeah. number two. I don't think we've ever fallen into that. Mm -hmm. Third position. So if we did nothing else, we made a difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, just being, you know, <laughs> so, 
Just we by live, existing. Just, just, <laughs> so that's funny. My mom would crack up. She was cracked up about that. But um, but um, so like you know, I've you know me. I've you know you two. I you know always set on some type of racial justice or fair and partial policing boards or um, you know try to make a help but make a difference for people of color. Yeah. You know, try to work in, and work with them and um, you know in the communities and you know my my goal is to like um, how can we all work together like I do. You know, how can I work with everybody? Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not mad at nobody. I'm not I'm not mad at for what? I'm not mad at anyone. All I'm just trying to say is that you know, I'm glad some of the blinders are coming off of people's face and whereas they can understand what they're doing. There's they seem to be I I guess I don't really don't know hope in hope what um people non people of color are doing right now they've done a lot of protesting and a lot of you know black lives matter stuff they have you know they 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 you see in those um tv stuff or um protests i say that they mean it you look at them they really mean it. people non people of color they out there they you know they don't have to wear a black lives matter shirt they don't have to wear, have signs they don't have to speak on behalf of let's get this right you know what i mean you know with between um they don't have to yeah. do that. And so, why are they doing it? Obviously, something. Why? Why? Well, I think that. Why now? I mean, right. I, mean I mean, why now? Well, I, I, mean, think there's a, now? I think there's a few things. I think, you know, since Trump's election in 2016, um, it's harder for um, white people to pretend that. Um, racism isn't an issue you know before they could run off but they could say you got crumbs from clinton you got crumbs you had obama post-racial this post-racial you know but uh, trump kind of came and blew the lid off of their whole i mean all of white supremacy and and really revealed it in a way that um, it was hard for so many white people to continue to to ignore and and through that process um you know some have chosen to reflect deeply within themselves and what it means uh, to be white in this country um, and to recognize the ways that systemic uh, white supremacy is really harming everyone. And I think, you know, part of it is that they're now listening to us when we're like, oh, wait, this is what you meant. Yes, this is what we meant. And, and so more heads are turns and more heads are asking us, you know, what to do. And, and through that process, I think that they're realizing that it's not just us who are dying, but they're dying too, because they have been sold a whole bill of lies about what this world is, what this country is. Like we, I mean, think about it historically, you know, what we've been taught about the history of this, this world and how it evolved um, around in, uh, Europe. Um, you know, so I think, I think they are waking up um, in, yeah. in some really important ways. Yeah. And if they don't stay awake, we'll just keep get, going back through the cycle mm -hmm. until we're all dead and nobody wakes up. Right. And, and I think that that's starting to get through. Yeah, and, um, and I believe that. And so another part, too, is like um, those are those those are um, younger people and middle-aged people. They not, they, these younger people today, they're not, they not, they not playing around. They get it, they and get I love it. it. I, I, well, you know, and that's and why I think we've, we both have always preferred working with younger people because yeah. um, the, the level of... Um, ingrained um, hate is just not there and right. um, that entrenched sort of I know right. what what the world's about mm -hmm. follow me kind of thing isn't there it's just this natural curiosity and desire to connect with another mm -hmm. um, no is still there and so I you know for me I, I like um, listening to younger people it's weird when it's weird when I'm considering myself <laughs> older now but um, yeah, they just have wonderful ideas and ways of being and technology and the way technology oh, man, they're, so smart on that. they're digital natives in ways that you and I aren't and, and so their ability to make human connections uh, in ways that we never could is just it's right. incredible yeah um, yeah my whole team is uh, probably up to the age of 24 yeah. you know from like I don't know, 17 or 24. Yeah. And it's always been like that. It's so funny because, like, I just meet when I'm my Arts of Wonderful Mural Coalition, and it's like 20 of them. And we do, they do all the murals. And we just, before I came here too, we just met downtown. Yeah. It's about another mural. And when our um, mural is going to, um, going to do a, a portrait of a, one of our sponsors on the building. And, and they are out there, you know, doing like they do, you know what I mean? They're so in charge, you know what I mean? And, you know, I, we are, both of us, we always made sure that our youth, you know, yeah. are in charge. We like, you know, we, we don't like, that's why we always have youth advisory boards, mm -hmm. you know, and who ma makes the decisions on our programs, projects, and events. And this makes, it just make, makes so much sense, you know, and because 
we want them to lead themselves, you know, mm -hmm. peer peer model. We you know we just want to say, how can we help them? What you need? Right. You need to talk to one of our other sponsors. You need to talk to, you know, and you talk to a type of the cool more or you know about something or you know what do you need from me? You know, and then they they write on it like you said. They're right on it. So they have the they energy, it. they have the creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They get it. <laughs> All they the things. It. And they don't be like, okay, well, you know, he's, he's she's white, we don't want her. You know, he's white or he's black. Or they, 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 it's not a, they don't they colorblind. You know? And when they come, it's so the culture of all the youth that come together, the, my team is mm -hmm. all d diverse. You know, I mean, they, you know, right. I mean, you know, they all diverse. They, they I didn't make I didn't create that group. Mm -hmm. Somebody in our group created brought their friends together to, mm -hmm. to work on our coalitions or work with our mm -hmm. um, youth group or work mm -hmm. with our programs, projects, and events. And they always are some kids from all over the world or something. Well, see, of, I think that they're color conscious, not yeah. color blind. Oh. They're very aware of how people from different backgrounds add richness and depth, mm -hmm. and they want that. They, they, they realize, unlike our generations that think that, you know, um, the 40 acres and a mule or the little suburban house with the two dogs and the, you know unlike our generations that were taught that that's what you aim for they're aiming for diversity they're aiming for enrichment through um, understanding difference yeah. and that is just to me that's what's powerful and that's what's gonna undo all this sh like stuff that yeah we've it's so funny you know you know you know in like a lot a lot of um you know wonderful nonprofits and other agencies or youth service providers you know um Still today, you know, we've been doing this work. I've been doing this since uh, 1999 for youth advisory boards, mm -hmm. putting ch youth centers in malls since 2003, free right. chill out centers in um, Loft 89 and you know, all, these, right. all these cool places. You know, and uh, free for kids, right? For years, and then you know, all the programs, the projects we do all around in the parks or whatever. You know, and so when I start, when I talk to an adult, and it's still the same. When I talk to an adult about these programs, they're like, wow. I'm surprised I've never heard of these things. I'm surprised that, you know, and, and, um, and, and I, the reason why they have never heard of it, because I don't even talk to them about it, you know, because it's not, it's not about them. Right. It's about the youth who I, who I serve by. Right. That's why they have Youth Advisory Board. Ask any youth about Chill Out Centers or, or Life Support of Mine or you know, Art So Wonderful or all our places. They know about them. They right. Ask any, just by any youth about some chill place like Chill Out Centers or whatever. They know all about them. You know what I mean? Actually, adult, they, they don't know anything about them because, first of all, I don't, I don't have the time to present to them. I work with the schools, like I work with your school, Mill Rivers. I work with all the high schools and colleges around, and I present to the youth who I serve. See, I serve youth. So I get there, I talk to them, and, and they tell me what's good. I see a lot of people think that, you, for some reason, that you've served them, and they're in the capacity of being like an executive director or director, and they, they think they can write a grant without talking to the people who they serve. I don't go, that's not mm -hmm. how I do it. That's, I don't do that. My art director, she's 24, she, she write our art grants. I don't, I don't, you know, she wants some word from me or something, I give it to her, but she knows what our art um, galleries need, because she, she's also the curator. And, Alondra de la Cuesta. She's also our curator, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, so she, she knows, mm -hmm. you know, and she worked with all our artists and all our team. So what I look like, and she, she worked with them. She can probably meet with some of them right now, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what it looks like me going in and talking about his, this how it should be done, you know what I mean? Yeah. And she does, and she does the work. And why should I uh, talk, you know, that, that's what it is, I mean. Like, mm -hmm. So that I give you for leadership to be able to lead based on what their, what their goals, dreams, and aspirations are and things they want to do. And and this and this and I've done that forever. And since you know me. Yeah. I, you you help me put together youth boards in um in uh, Rutland County. That's right. Yeah. All the time. Because you know I won't do nothing. I say first thing I gotta do is put together a youth board. I'm not gonna make no move. I ain't gonna say nothing. All I know until I get a youth board together and tell them and here's some ideas about um what some of the youth groups have done in Chittenden County, you know what I mean? Right. It's some things they've done, you know. This is how they operate the youth centers. Well. And so here's some ideas for you, but take with, with this whole different county, so we do what we need to do in this county, you know what Right. So, and so that's how I do it, and I stand by that forever. I will never turn from that. Right. And so I don't, so that's what I do. So that's why a lot of adults don't hear about our programs. That's why they we don't have no over 50 awards. I will say, this, I, I'm going to talk about all our 50 awards, but this is two awards that I'm proud of all the most, and that is, um, uh, we had the Greek Award from UVM, and uh, it was the fraternity and sorority award. And, and uh, we got that like 2004 or so. Every time I go to the uh, ph ph um, philanthropist, I mean, chairs meetings, 
at the, um, Davidson, I bring my war, and they be like, bye, and, you know. It means a lot. It means a lot to them too, you know. It means a lot to me too. Mm -hmm. And we have um, the Kids Safe Collaborative Award, which is a big award in the state of Vermont for youth safety and families, work with law enforcement, the mm -hmm. court, for, you know, safety of youth and families. Mm -hmm. And we got four of those. Wow. So, 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 so those, out of all the 50 some awards, we got those two out of my most proud of. Yeah. So I'm, I'm That's you know, great. yeah, and, you know, people, I, I don't go around saying all that stuff to me, but you know, it's no me. I don't, I don't need to, you know what I mean? Right. I don't really don't need to. A but, lion will never have to tell you it's a lion. That's right. <laughs> That's what I, I read once. <laughs> you know, I love. I, I, all I know is that, you know, I don't. I can tell somebody this on Z in time that I work for the people who I serve. I work for you. I, they don't work for me. I work for them because right. that's what it's supposed to be. So, so. Um, so what's coming up now? So what was, so, oh, so tell me, what's the job description for the NAACP person in, was it Chittagong County? Oh, um, what's it, how so that works? How, what do you need to do? Really I might need to apply for that. It would be, well, there's, it's, it's not <laughs> application, it's not paid. Um, and I think people forget that we're all volunteers, which in some, some people look at what the scope of what we do, they're like, no. But really every branch is, is uh, locally based and uh, does what its community needs it to. Again, uh, the NAACP has five game changers, which are the, the key areas in which we operate. But what that looks like is based on you know what your community needs within those areas. So this person <clears throat> would basically, um, they would want to talk to myself and Stefan Gillum and we would put their name forth to um, our state area conference president, Juan Cofield. And Juan would have a conversation with them and then we would get help them get um, the number of folks needed to reactivate the branch. And then they would install officers. And um, typically your, your person that had your organizing committee becomes the president, but it doesn't have to be that way. So if um, there are folks that are interested in being part of it, but don't necessarily want to be president, but they would be secretary, or maybe they want to be the head of the Environmental Action Committee. There are different ways that people can get involved, but this, this person who's the organizing committee chair, um, typically, you know, their job is just to get the number of members and then to start holding the meetings. And um, before you know it, you become the president, and then you're four years in, like, wait, what just happened? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know,